Hello, you're very welcome to a special edition of the Tackling Sport podcast, a little bite-sized video where we do maybe a weekly series called Tackling FPL. And I'm Daniel Hussey, your host, joined alongside me by the expert in chief, Kieran McDermott. Kieran, welcome along. Dan, how are you? Thanks for having me back after last week. Yeah, to tell the first time viewers a little bit about yourself, how you got on last season and what were your sort of metrics there as well. Yeah, oh, so I'm, I'm calling it a historic run. I don't know if that's being too generous to myself. I, I had a good year last year. Um, I finished 2636, 2,636 uh, in, in the world. Um, spent far too much time on it, as I mentioned last week. Um, but thankfully, I've kind of got a bit of a system so that I don't have to spend as much time as it this year. Um, but still, yeah, no enjoying it. And picking the right teams is the plan. So. so I think what people want to know is how you got on in game week one because you were living up to the hype. Or did you live up to the hype in game week one, given the, the introduction you gave us there? Yeah, I went off reasonably without a, without a hitch. I think there was some things that didn't go to plan, some things did, and it kind of balanced out. So I ended up with 70, 77 points. So we'll take that um, 400k in the moment. at the moment. You don't want to be too big. Game week one is a good time to have a bad week because then your green arrows are, are come a little bit easier. Uh, but I'll take it. First week was good. Brilliant. So let's, let's game week two. This is what we're all about here. If you want to maybe share your screen, talk us through your team about week one. A little bit yeah. of review and then touch yeah. on that and I'll share the screen. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, so 77, I'll take it, uh, definitely. Um, obviously, Ramsdale did well, looks pretty solid. Um, Arsenal, obviously, they were at the early kickoff. No one really had an idea how they do. They did very well. Um, same story for City. Thankfully, those two two clean sheets from Cancelo and from Walker. Cancelo with a cheeky little bonus point as well, which is nice. Obviously, uh, Liverpool didn't go to plan in terms of clean sheets. Nothing changes there. Just didn't get the rub of the green, I suppose. Um, I think they deserve to concede, definitely. But hopefully, yeah, kicking into it, they'll, they'll be Robertson and uh, Alexander Arnold still a hold. So hopefully, they, they keep clean sheets in the coming weeks. And James, then he's the city's best, or he's, he's Chelsea's best player. Sorry, so he got two bonus points. He got a yellow card. Um, very solid. Martinelli. Great pick. He, yeah, didn't have too many chances, but he, he he definitely took the, he probably should have scored before, but eight points, no bonus points, we'll take it. Um, Salah being Salah, he's the, the first first uh, game week man, Halls again. Haaland, obviously, which we can chat about, um, obviously went really, really well. Uh, and two for Jesus, he looked pretty good. The stats behind him aren't the best, um, but no, yeah, all in all, it was a pretty pretty solid week. So, yeah, so what are your sort of transfer plans for Game Week 2 looking ahead? You mentioned Haaland. I guess there's going to be a massive captaincy battle between Haaland and Salah, but from what yeah. I've seen, it's definitely leaning towards Haaland for sure. Definitely. No, yeah, so it's it's kind of a hold for me this week. Luckily, uh, I'm in a position where, obviously, the, the players I had picked, there's not a massive rotational risk, at least. So I'm, I'm holding and rolling the free transfer, so it'll be nice to have two free transfers going into Game Week 3 when there's a few more decisions to make. And so Ramsdale, obviously, is a hold. Um, he's sweet for the next four or five weeks. The run of fixtures and how they looked early on, um, it looks like they're, they're a solid pick for, for clean sheets, hopefully, you, you would hope. And the same story for Cancelo and Walker. They played a little bit further in field. Um, so I don't know if attacking-wise they're the same assets as they were last year, particularly Cancelo. Um, the concern with regards to them is that I, th I think that the rumours that Guerrero from, from Dortmund and, and maybe some other fullbacks are going to be signed before the end of the window, that'll take definitely from them. And I think if they were to sign another fullback, I'd swap out Walker most likely. And I'd probably do Ederson, to be honest, instead of Ramsdale, uh, just to bank on those clean sheets. Because City are pretty clean for the next 10 weeks, literally. Um, I think they've got Spurs in there, uh, not too far down the line. But other than that, yeah, Cancelo and, and Walker are a hold. And same story with Robertson and, and Alexander-Arnold. Um, yeah, Crystal Palace this week. The stats of Liverpool against Crystal Palace is really good. So they're, they're an obvious hold. And um, James against Tottenham, a bit more of a risk, but I'm happy to take that chance considering his performance last week. And um, I've gone, so the one change in my lineup is Leon Bailey. Um, that could change, Dan. So Villa are the early fixture. So you'd hope to get a cheeky bit of team news prior to the deadline at 11. Uh, at least, yeah, a kind of a bit more of a percentage chance of who's starting. He started up top, obviously. Ollie Watkins didn't play. He didn't look bad. The stats weren't too bad for Bailey. 
Um, but I think he's if he's starting this week, uh, he's worth a point again at his price point. Um, Andreas Perea, then I have him on the bench. Uh, he looked really, really good. He's picking up some really advanced positions. So I think if if there's right now the Villa fan forums are saying that Bailey is a good thing to start on Saturday. Uh, and if that changes in any way, I'll have no problem swapping Andres Perea out for, for Bailey. Um, and then the rest, yeah, basically pick themselves at this stage. Martinelli then uh, will, will keep his place. Salah is the same. Uh, and Haaland and, and Jesus up top for, for now. Yeah, and Neto's got no chance with you based on those other two players ahead of him. Yeah, essentially, I, th- like I wasn't really banking on... Obviously, Podence was the one who kind of went off for Wolves. Um, Neto, I, I still believe in him. Obviously, I th- they, they didn't look great in attacking three, Huang, Neto and, and Podence. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm, I'm definitely siding more towards Perea or Bailey. But, yeah, that said, um, obviously, without Jimenez, it's still... Neto is probably playing further forward than he, than he would. So he's a better chance of returning. But for now, I'm going to go with either uh, Andreas Perea or Bailey. And, and, then, so, yeah. and then Haaland for you is the, the out-and-out out captain there. There's no debate there, or is there any yeah. temptation as a Liverpool fan as well? There, there's definitely a debate. Um, I think for me, it's obviously Haaland was unbelievable um, last week. The, the XG and everything like that speaks to that. Um, I don't know if I wasn't banking too much on the penalties. It, maybe it wasn't just in my thinking as much. Um, but they're going to get lots of penalties. Uh, I think they had nine last year in the Premier League, which is which is a whole lot. Um, so he's an obvious pick for me. I think Salah, um, the stats behind Salah versus Crystal Palace, especially at Anfield, are really, really good. Um, so if you don't have Haaland, obviously no worries putting on Salah. Um, but the factor that's it's it's kind of a, a it's not so much a cause for concern, but it's just worth keeping an eye on this week is is the fact that Darwin Nunes will likely play ninety minutes. And what impact that has on Salah, we don't know. Obviously, they look really, really good together uh, at the, the the kind of last 34 minutes against Fulham. Um, but it, he might just take a little bit of the kind of XG and, and the chances away from Salah um, in, in that new as we'll, we'll, be, we'll be probably starting. And there's no one else in City who's going to look like they're going to take chances away from Haaland. He's their main man. He's on the penalties. So now I think this week it's an easy decision for me, Captain Haaland. The other factor then is he's he's owned by 52% of the, the managers, basically, and the vast majority of them are going to captain him. So if you don't captain Haaland and he scores two or three or one even, uh, you're going to lose out massively. Um, so I think it's, it's a risk to go against Haaland this week. Now, I'm not going to name any names, but... Say a mate of mine went with Carrie Kane very last minute over Holland, <laughs> despite his warnings from Kieran based on way for week two in Bournemouth. And he's been stressing it out about this all week. The poor lad, he obviously missed the price differential on Sunday night because he just wasn't in the mood for it. And now he's panicking. Realistically, the only way you can bring Holland is by maybe taking one of his eight million pound midfielders and bringing in a Jack Grealish or something. Um, would you recommend taking the four point hit to do something like that or? What's the sort of strategy for someone that made an absolute mess of it in game yeah. one? Firstly, I don't feel sorry for him. It was the, it was the wrong decision. Um, I think, honestly, you don't want to take hits early on, ideally. Um, but this one is probably worth it. Um, I would say definitely worth it. Uh, it's just dangerous to not have Hall at the moment. You're massively vulnerable. Kane, look, I you can jump across to this screen and just show the, the XG of last week. Kane, nowhere to be seen. I think he was something like 0.2, uh, which is pretty small. Um, Haaland, he got a penalty to that adds 0.75, but he was 2.17 XG, which is massive. Um, so I think it's 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 a pretty easy switch across, and I think it's worth a minus four. Um, the other thing that maybe hadn't been considered so much or wasn't much in, in my kind of thought process is the the performance of Kulosevsky. Um, again, like he's just taken a lot of those chances maybe away from Kane and, and picking up those positions that maybe he didn't pick up last year. He looked really, really good. Um, and when you consider people in City's team that aren't going to take chances away from, from Haaland, um, he's keeping his runs inside the width of the post. Everyone else is staying wide and just giving him so much space, whereas Kane mightn't have that anymore. Um, I th- I do, honestly, I, I think it's an easy um, easy swap. So you can tell your friend to, to sell Kane and buy Haaland. Yeah, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let him know as, as best I can. Um, Poor lad, nice fella, nice fella. Um, any kind of final thoughts for... 
for the guys, for anyone listening in game week two, the, I did want to kind of briefly touch on wild card. I presume that's a no go, but are, are there any special circumstances? Because there will be people listening in that have perhaps don't have Salah or Haaland, and there's just too many switches of the A12 points that maybe they feel a wild card. Is an early wild card this season of all seasons perhaps an, uh, an option here this weekend? It is. It, it, it's, I would probably say it's too early unless you completely. Um made a lot of wrong decisions in, in, in the kind of build up to, to week one and um, there's unlimited transfers in the world cup this year so it's basically three wild cards and um, so it's not it's not a bad thing if you need to restructure your team already um so yeah i, I wouldn't be against it so much um, i think people who are trying to make the move from Haaland to kane um or just bring in Haaland in general if you don't have kane um i think the enabler is big time andreas Perea. he's only 4.5 million um so selling down an eight million midfielder to Perea is is definitely viable um other than that if you, if you had to sell out maybe robertson to zinchenko zinchenko looked really really good obviously the the fixtures for arsenal for the next four weeks there's clean sheet potential uh, and he had an expected assist of something like 0.7 or 0.8 uh so he looked very good for both kind of returns defensive and attacking so zinchenko is, is potentially an enabler if you're coming off uh, i would say robertson um beyond that yeah martinelli as well if you want to sell down late midfielder um so yeah i think the key performance it's too early to say and it's too early to say you absolutely need this person barring Haaland. um but i think definitely buying in andres perea as an enabler big time martinelli looked really really good sinchenko and then kuliseski i'd also highlight um i know he's a little bit more expensive but if you had the likes of maybe a raheem sterling in there you could swap him out for kuliseski definitely um, so those guys would would be the neighbors to get you Haaland. Um, and I'd also just say then it's it's maybe it's not even too early to say about Darwin Nunes because you can see here 1.67 off 37 minutes um, is unbelievable. Obviously he scored a goal um, and he got an assist. So it, he looks really really good. If he starts playing 90 minutes the whole time, um, I th- he's he's near. Uh, essential um, and what I might do then is just get rid of Jesus um, I think it is the, the decision for a lot of people will come really soon for Jesus or Darwin Nunes I'm not there yet um, I'd have to wait and see what Darwin Nunes does soon and um, but yeah look he looks like a really really brilliant asset um, I know people love Jesus and his, his ownership is really really high um, but if you get in early on the wave uh, for, for Nunes and he outscores Jesus you're, you're winning big so that's one to keep an eye on this week absolutely Kieran, as always, thanks a million. If you enjoyed what you listened to, we'll be back next week. Do like and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss the Tackling FPL episode. Kieran, thank you very much as always. Here's that. All the best. Thank you.